our whole lives we spend looking at the horizon and it's flat. I mean, it's, it's, it's flat. That's all. That's what the horizon is supposed to look like. And you get up here to orbit, all of a sudden, the Earth is curved. And you may expect everything up here in microgravity to float, because most everything does float. However, sometimes, something a little different happens. Sometimes, you just might find a little pocket of gravity. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So I love it when I get questions like this because I want people, I want everybody certainly here at the Smithsonian today, all the future engineers and everywhere to understand why the science on the space station helps us out here on Earth. Helps us out here on Earth. Believe it or not, they process one third of the federal uh, government uh, payroll. And that's over $200 billion every two weeks that runs through this particular facility. We also have Big Easy Productions. And they do uh, movies that I can't talk about right now, but they also do movie productions uh, here as uh, well. So, And they do uh, movies that I can't talk about right now, but they also do movie productions uh, here as uh, well. So there's a lot of great things that come out of Mishu that you wouldn't realize. And that allows us to kind of offset some of our costs back to the work we do from a NASA perspective. And that's key when you start talking about the taxpayer dollars acres on the one roof line. That's like 31 football fields that can fit in this particular building. 31 football fields 31 on, the one roof. on the one roof. So we have, we have a lot of football going on here. So our job is to build rockets. You can't get to Mars without going through New Orleans. <laughs> see by the clear span, the high eave, the insulation properties, the HVAC properties, uh, the power. Um, it's just meant for this exact purpose. How about size? How does it compare size-wise? Uh, stage two is 13,000 square feet, which is comparable to many. Um, and this stage is 31,000 square feet, which is the lowest. mission to go back to the moon and then Mars and beyond flies through New Orleans. So exciting. Today, the space agency's top officer made his first official visit to the Michu assembly facility in New Orleans East. That's where workers are building the next generation of manned space flight. Paul Murphy was on the tour and joins us with details. Get your imagination going, Paul. Get your imagination going, Paul. Get your imagination going, Paul. Oh, it does, Karen and Natalie. It doesn't get any better than that, unless you got a seat on the spaceship. 
So that'd be nice having a seat on that space shot, space shot, space and shot. We often say, you know, the path to the moon and Mars goes through the worlds, and it really does. I mean, this facility, as you look around the pictures on the wall, as, as you look around the pictures on the wall, as, this facility, as you look around the pictures on the wall, as, as you look around the pictures on the wall, has a, a tremendous history. I mean, the visual effects budgets for movies have gone from a few million to tens of millions. So, you know, we have rocket scientists and all that kind of stuff working on, on movies. So, you know, we have rocket scientists and all that kind of stuff working on, on movies. So, uh, but it also speaks to, uh, to a sense of, of history, a sense of purpose, and a sense of, of origin, uh, a sense of story. And that's what you folks are all about, is the sense of story. And uh, uh, this, this forging the, the future, this link between science and science fiction, uh, is for us uh, a fascinating one. It's why a lot of us got into this. You may expect everything up here in microgravity to float, because most everything does float. However, sometimes something a little different happens. Sometimes you just might find a little pocket of gravity. Seven, six. Plus the sponsors again. Data shows millennials don't like the color. And we need a hashtag. gather some data, and then they send that back to Earth, you want to put that information in context for people to see and understand. Let's say I want to do an animation of a uh, lander that's on Mars. Basically, you model the spacecraft in 3D, so you have to pick parts of it, like the legs or the arms. Is this footage? I did a test. Now, I had no idea what the result was going to be, but it turned out that it did indeed look like NASA was faking their ISS footage. As you can see here, the people in the foreground should have a nice consistent fade out to the background, but you see around the shirts, the blue shirts, the edges aren't properly defined as they should be, and that's because they're filming in front of a blue screen, which is pretty fucking stupid filming a blue shirt in front of a blue screen.
the astronauts in space is underground is underway here on the ground too with their spatulas at the ready and i looked up at the night sky and, and what persists to this day and what is an embarrassingly urban thought i look up at the night sky from the finest mountaintops in the world and i look up and i say it reminds me of the hayden planetarium <laughs> i mean i don't know it's embarrassing see i beg for and it's these instruments that will give us the juicy details about the early days of the universe, as well as see things sharper than any telescope has before. If you were a bumblebee hovering out at the distance of the moon, we would be able to see you. If you were a bumblebee hovering out at the distance of the moon, we would be able to see you, both by your reflected sunlight and by the thermal irradiation, the heat that you emit. What's up, tubes? This is Flathead Politics. About a month ago, I moved my website, flathead.world, to a new dedicated server. The tools that we had in place before are still there, uh, among which being the accelerometer tool, which basically allows you to uh, travel from point A to point B. And in between those two points, um, every five minutes, plot data to the cloud, that data being um, your alpha, beta and gamma and XYZ coordinates from the device you're using and then once that trip is terminated you would be able to visualize that data in a chart um, also we have the Google Maps tool that utilizes Google Maps API that allows you to draw a point from point A to point B and then quickly discern uh, how much curvature is missing in between those two points and then most importantly is we have the bot where you can save uh, YouTube clips at a particular moment uh, throughout the course of a video and that would allow me as a content creator to uh, be able to access um, more content because I have essentially more sets of eyes out looking at NASA videos or what have you also any other content creators would have access to, to my clips and your clips as well so and then we're uh, also going to add a activism tool that allows you, those of you that who do do activism, if you're out and about and you have a tablet in your hand, you'll have a, a structured way to quickly pull up videos to drive a point home. And uh, I think having some structure in place will really enhance your ability to, to get your point across to your captive audience. And uh, so yeah, those tools are in place. I'll put the URL to the new location, flathead.world, down below in the comments. And I would uh, like to again thank all who support and also um, subscribe if you have not. And thanks for watching. And as always, peace.